Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here and in today's CSENT and CCNA 5 minute video boot camp we're going to spend some time talking about loopback interfaces and then we're going to see them in action on live Cisco routers here in just about 90 seconds but I want to go over a couple of facts with you as far as these particular interfaces go first. First off, of course, they do not physically exist, talking about a loopback interface. If you go around the back of the router or even the front of the router, you're not going to see any of those ports labeled loopback X or anything like that. And we're going to create one again here on the live equipment and give you a little exam tip to go along with that. Now, one challenging thing about starting with your network studies or really starting with any studies is that you're learning about things but you don't know how to use them yet. Now that's all part of the learning process. I went through the same thing. You'll go through it too. But I think that's especially true of loopback interfaces because we hit you with that pretty early in your Cisco studies and then we don't really use them for much of anything. You know, as I have on the board, they can and often are used to determine what the OSPF RID is but they do have more important uses. And one that I want to mention to you in particular, it's in use with a network monitoring tool. Now really any tool can do this, because let's look at it this way. If you are monitoring a remote router, if you're monitoring the availability of that router, if you monitor a physical interface, that physical interface could be unavailable, it could go down, someone could shut it down, but the router itself is still up and it could be available through another path. Let's say on a remote router, just because you turn the serial zero interface off, it doesn't mean the entire router's down. But So what we often do with tools like that is monitor that remote router's loopback interface. Because since that is a logical interface that does not physically exist, it can't have anything physically go wrong with it. The only reason that a loopback interface becomes unavailable on a router is because someone either deliberately removes the loopback interface or that router is indeed down. And of course, that's generally the case there 99% of the time because we don't delete loopbacks very often. So they are used with network monitoring tools quite often. And as I mentioned, they do determine the OSPF for it. Now, when you think about loopbacks too, you might think about a certain range of IP addresses. And actually, I'm going to bring this up on Wikipedia. They have an excellent page on loopback, by the way, you might want to check out. But under virtual network interface, you see a couple of facts here that it's implemented in TCP IP. It's implemented in software only. It's not connected to hardware. And we all know that address 127.0.0.1, right? You got to be able to ping that on the local device. Uh, otherwise, TCP IP is not correctly installed. And Again, the most commonly used IP address for that, the one we need to know is 127.0.0.1, but we also know that entire reserved address range of 127.0.0.0 to 127.255.255.255 255 .255. for you CCNA candidates. It also doesn't hurt to know the IP version 6 loopback and the two different ways there you can express it. Now let's step out to the live equipment for a moment because another great reason that you have these, especially in lab environments, particularly in lab environments I should say, is to create more networks to practice your configs with. Because if you are limited to the physical interfaces, even if you made sub-interfaces, that would get a little clumsy after a while. But that's the great thing. If I want 20 practice networks to work with, I could just create 20 loopback interfaces on 20 different networks and go from there. So that's a great tool as well. One thing I really want you to watch is it's really easy to do this. Let's say you're configuring, let's exit out of there. Let's uh, call it loopback. Actually, we'll go a little longer in five minutes here as I want to show you these numbers, give you another tip here. Now, I believe this is uh, 2,147,483,647. I doubt you're ever going to have that many loopbacks. But I do get asked often, you know, well, how do you know how to number them? Really, that's up to you. But what I like to do, especially in a lab environment, is if I'm creating, say, interface loopback 27 or 142 to... Uh, put on the network 142.0.0.0, that's where I'll get the name from. So let me say that one more time, so I said a little backwards. Let's say that I was going to put on the practice network 55.0.0.0.8. I would call this interface loopback 55. It's just a good organizational tool. It does come in handy when you get a lot of networks on your practice lab. Now, so we got an interface loopback 55, and hey, I know what the loopback interface range is. 
and I'm going to give it an address from that range 127 55 55 55 not a valid host address. None of the addresses from the reserved loopback range can be put on a Cisco loopback interface. And the reason I'm mentioning that, just in case if you take the CSENT and you really haven't had a lot of hands-on with this, it's a logical thought. Well, you know, hey, I'll take an address from that reserved range and I'll put it on this logical interface on the Cisco router. But you literally can't do that. So you have to watch that in multiple choice practice exams too because it's one of these things where the router will not let you go wrong, but of course an exam question might. So again, keep that in mind, please. Just because you see a loopback interface on a Cisco router, you've still got to give it a valid host address. You can't give it a range, an address from that 127.000 range. That sums it up for today's video boot camp. I appreciate you joining me here. And as soon as I scroll down here, I'll invite you to join me out on Twitter, on YouTube, our blog, and on Facebook as well. And also, all of our materials are heading for Amazon.com and other ebook sites very shortly. And we'll have plenty of free books for you starting in May. Thanks again for making TBA part of your Cisco certification success story. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE12933.